you live, you live out there and you can't hear it on the AM. Well, I'm sorry, you'll have to move. And don't think that people haven't. Some people have actually chosen where they're going to live by the signal they can get on LBC radio. It's true, a woman called Mike Dickin today and told him that. Extraordinary business. Hello, Rosemary. Do you know, we were talking the other night and, um, and I think there was a bit, we got a little bit at cross purposes, but I'm so pleased you called tonight because you always send such very nice notes and things and I wanted to thank you for those. Oh, I'm so pleased. Michael, since you were living in Hoban, I've been in touch with you. Ten years ago, I lost Stefan, my husband. You remember I called him Roborowski because we had a Rover car and you laughed at it. Yes. And, you know, I've been mighty, I, I lost my sight through crying. And so for ten years I've been without sight, but nevertheless, I write lovely poems to you, and they're, t- they're, they're um, typed by somebody else, and I send them to you. Mm. And you're part of my life because my only interest is coming to bed in the evenings and listening to you. And I, I really love you, and I don't mean in a foolish way, but mm. I love you for your voice and your kindness and the warmth of your, it's the gentle warmth of your voice and the things that you talk about. And I don't know who will miss you more than me because I come to bed at night excited and thrilled and I get into bed to wait for your voice. Well, whoever you speak to, whether you're speaking to people who you're introducing, I know I could never be introduced because I can't see. And should, should I meet anybody, I wouldn't see whether their eyes were bright or straight or, or fair. So I couldn't do anything. All I am is alone here. But thank God your voice and you here you're like a presence to me. I lie in bed and I think of you and I really love you, not in a bad way, but in a beautiful way because your voice is like music. Whatever you talk about, whatever you say, fills me with pleasure and I'm terribly, terribly soft, sad that you're going away. If I've got two photographs of you standing on my cabinet. I can't see them, but they're written... You've written to me on them, and I've had some presents from you too. But nevertheless, I'm going to miss you more than anybody else in the world. I've been here for two hours waiting, but I don't mind that, darling. It's just that I want you to be happy and to be loved and to be looked after and all the goodness in the world to come to you and your family. And I hope that somehow I'll get you again. I've heard that there's a possibility if I turn my little tape somewhere or other, you will be there. And I'll try very, very hard to find you because you give me peace and warmth and love. Paul Rosemary, they're things that uh, are very special. You can't, uh, you can't stick a tag on that sort of thing. And, uh, and I think you've been very kind, very flattering, and thank you very much. I'm, I'm not actually a very uh, demonstrative person. And I was reading my chart the other day. You know, somebody did a chart for me. I was reading it, and I realised why. <laughs> not that sort of open, really, and uh, or not not necessarily that tactile. And, uh, so, so it's uh, it's quite difficult for me sometimes to uh, to talk about certain subjects. But I sort of got around it, you know. It's sort of like uh, dyslexia of the emotions. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's what I shall tell the judge next Wednesday, actually, when the case comes out. <laughs> she told me she was 18, you know. But um, I, I think, actually, at the moment, I just want to, want to also say thank you to my mother, because she's, uh, she's my greatest critic, you know. She listens to all the programmes I, I do, all that are in London, you know, and, uh, and has a view on it. <laughs> and she's very tough on me. Didn't sound very cheerful the other night. Oh, didn't I? No. But anyway, bless you, darling. Thank you. Martin. Hello. Uh, hello, Mike. Hello, Martin. Yes, uh, I'd just like to wish everybody at LBC the best of luck. Thank you. And I say I've been listening now for 16 years. Have you really? Yes, I got my radio clock on my 14th birthday from my father. I was trying to find a station. I found LBC, and not every night for the last 16 years, but 98% of every night I've listened to you as I fall asleep. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you're uh, more than welcome. And I'd just like to mention my finest memory on LBC. What's that? It was, or well, must have been about six years ago, and I think it was Robbie Vincent, and uh, they had a vet on. Mm-hmm. And the lady, uh, Pat from Dagnum, phoned up, and she had a problem with her lobster. A lobster. And uh, right. she bought this lobster and looking after it as best she can. 
and it kept dying. And she, or she, it died, and she went and bought another lobster. And mm. same thing kept happening, and that couldn't work out. He said, "Well, what water are you put in? Shell fresh water, taking it straight out of the tap." And it's sort of a little bit of laughter there because, as, as you well know, lobsters go into uh, mm. salt water. Yes. Lovely. But, I mean, that's, that's not really the funny bit. About three months later, I was listening to Robbie Vincent again, and he did mention, if you want to kill your lobster, phone up Pat from Dagenham. And since then, I've, I just keep remembering it, and I just keep laughing. <laughs> sort of every sort of five or six months, it just... <laughs> just pops out. It just a little pops thought. out of a little laugh, and if Pat is from Dagenham is listening, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I, I really can't stretch to that but uh what about a bit of a crab paste sandwich will that do you there we are have you had have you haven't eaten lobster it's not very exciting lobster is it it's ex, it's great claim to fame is it's expensive what does it taste of it doesn't apparently not much good to talk to you martin jordan's with us hi jordan hello 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 um i can't say that i've been listening for yonks and yonks because i've only been listening for about three years right but i can honestly say lbc has changed my life for the better because mm. I met and married um, the man I'm married to now because of LBC. What is it, Midnight Encounters? Um, unfortunately not, although I've been on there twice as well. <laughs> Does he know? <laughs> yes, he did know because that was uh, before I met him, not after. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I'm sorry, I didn't realise yeah. Um, yeah, we um, actually met through um, one of the Through the Night shows, really. Yes. Because um, he heard me keep calling up. Um, so, I mean, you know, great things can happen. I you can. Know, I mean, when I was on my own and I was very depressed, it was just, you know, such a relief to have someone I could phone up and talk to and just sort of, you know, someone that was listening to all my op opinions and stuff. And did he used to phone up afterwards saying, she was right, that's just how I feel about it? No, he didn't. He was didn't too he? quiet for that. No, he just used to think it. But now he knows I'm perfect, so that's OK. Mm. Well, I, I think that's good, Jordan. I, I'm glad that it worked for you. I think self-confidence is important. No, it's, it's, it's extraordinary, isn't it, how you meet people? How you meet someone very special. Strange business. That you could uh, sometimes be working with somebody. This is the one thing that really comes to personal relationships with people who have been working together for a few years, maybe, and suddenly discover that they've always been terribly attracted to each other. How did... How did this slip past? It's strange, isn't it? I, I think it's terribly interesting. I don't know if it's a radio programme, because I don't think you could get maybe people to be candid enough about it. But that's interesting. I wonder, I wonder if these people do actually grow towards the person they're attracted to. I mean, some people just walk into a room and there it is. Bing! Magic. But others, different thing. Hello, Joan. Oh, hello, Mike. Hello. <laughs> Do you know something? It's the, uh, it's the, it's the interface uh, thing. Then. I was saying to somebody this evening, you know, the number of answers you've got, the yes. people who call up and say you've gone thinned. Yes. And uh, I laugh every time because you, you invent some wonderful ones. Well, uh, that's tonight actually. I've been telling the truth. I, well, I spoke with Chris Sanford earlier on. Yeah. I said that it's the inter. There's a there's a device you see which when you have talk radio which hooks up the phones to the studio. And th I'm speaking to you from Studio 4 at the moment, and um, the Studio 4 interface has always been a bit naff. Oh, it? Yes, from day one. And we're talking about new. This is new here. This was new in the 91 oh. or something, and it's it's never been too much good. Never been right. Never been right. No. Never been right. We've, we've had our top man on it. Uh -huh. and, uh, too late now. Well, no, no, because it, it moves over to... Um, what does it move over? London News Talk, 11.52am at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, too late for you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, too late for me. It is. But mm. I, I started an LBC oh, the year before the last election. Did you? So in desperation to what was not happening, you know, in the uh, pre-election yeah. wind-up. And I found LBC and it sort of it kept me sane. Did it? Kept me sane because I could say all those things that nobody wanted to listen to when they came around the door selling me mm. politics yes and that was absolutely marvelous and i find then because i enjoyed what well, everything mm. on lbc especially in the evenings and i thought well why have i been watching tv because mm. it, tv doesn't make me feel like this it makes me feel rotten mm. so i got rid of the tv 
And uh, I've been listening well, very regularly ever since. Oh, thank you. Mm, and it's been absolutely wonderful, but I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, Joan, a very dear friend of mine has done the same thing as you, got rid of the television. Not just because of uh, LBC, but has discovered, you know, just that you can get addicted to this darn thing and you're really wasting so much time sitting in front of it. That's the lovely thing about radio, isn't it? You can take it into the bathroom with you, you can do whatever you have to do, you can tidy up, you can do a bit of dusting and the radio's on, whatever it is, and it doesn't get in the way. Extraordinary thing. Thanks very much, Joan. Thank you. Joan's been converted, you know. Well, she might, she might just stay, and why wouldn't she? Hello, Sandy. Hello. 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 I'm just phoning up to say thank you for the last 20 years. I've never phoned before, but I thought, well, phone up and say thanks. Thank you very much. Started thank listening you. when my little boy was a baby. My was that those, boy was rest a baby. those restless nights, was it? Mm, not too bad. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think my most memorable one was the hurricane night. There was me and my candle and my radio. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes. Oh, dear, that was a night and a half, wasn't it? Yes, it was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, so it was a moment. The British um, fighting all adversity. Yes. Yeah, people call out, have you got a spare battery for it? Yeah, bizarre. Well, Sandy, I do wish you well. Yes, and and how old much. is your baby now, you said? Uh, 20? 20, yes. <laughs> no, <what's laughs> thank you name? very much. Nice. Good night. Good night. That's nice that people bother to do that, isn't it? Very nice. Thank you very much. Cherry, hello, Cherry. Hello, Mike. Hello. How are you? Well, I'm fine, actually. Um, I'm all right. Yeah, thank you very much. I've had a really nice night, and I didn't know anything about it. It's all a big treat, so... That sounds yeah. wonderful. You sounds like you had a wonderful time. I really did, actually. It was so great to see uh, some good chums around, and it's just a surprise. In fact, I haven't had a birthday party with that many people for years. <coughs> Not that it was my birthday, but, you know. So, what was your happy memories about LBC, Terry? Oh, I've listened to LBC for a number of years. Um, I'm a bit of an insomniac, so... Um, mm -hmm. I, I sort of have LBC on 24 hours a day almost um, and just wanted to say thanks to everyone at LBC and thank you to you and, you know, just going to miss it extremely. Oh. Um, it's going to be, it's a great shame it's going. Um, but uh, it's just been, you know, really wonderful um, station. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's very sad, but... Uh, Hopefully something will take its place or we'll find out where everyone's gone. I think we ought to start a Friends of LBC. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, the last caller made a very good point, you know, that it, it's somewhere where you can phone up and make your views known. And you're doing it in front of a big chunk of people. And there aren't that many places that give you that access, are there? No, that's right. Absolutely. So true. I think that's rather, it's, it's, it's rather special for that reason alone. Terry... Thank you very much indeed, and, and thanks for your support. And I hope that the, uh, the new team will get that too. Thank you very much. Hello, Anne. Hello. Hello. There Hello. you are. Lovely North London. <laughs> I've actually spoken to you earlier, but um, I won't go into that one because I didn't do very well when I did. <laughs> didn't you? No. So um, I just wanted to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It's, 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 been... it's uh, au revoir, really, because I'm just... Oh, well, yes. And maybe we'll meet somewhere else or you'll see me on the TV or listen to me on the radio or something you know yes so or, or maybe one day you might buy one of my books well yes <laughs> I might I was going to say about Joan that was making a comment about the television um, my television actually went pop and uh, ever since then I've been converted to the radio I used to listen to the radio a lot before mm -hmm. but now I listen to it all the time and uh, your program was one of the programs that helped me to sleep because also I suffer with insomnia and oh. uh so I hope wherever you're going, you're going to be in this sort of a slot. Well, maybe. <laughs> I, I used to uh, do quite a lot of work in the afternoons as well. I remember. Mm. Capital Radio. Yeah. Yeah. I was, just, I was just thinking, if we could get the right voice, and I'm not volunteering for it, but, you know, you could get it on prescription, couldn't you? Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? And it wouldn't, you wouldn't need the Valium or You would make else. a fortune. Do you know that? <laughs> 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 you would make a fortune. And I've got to tell you that, um, you know, Calling me Megadon Mickey is not <laughs> is uh, is a new is a new uh, ball game for me to work in. Thank you, bless you. Nice to talk to you. Thanks so much indeed. Many people said that uh, LBC Radio was uh, just a particular type. The audience before before I came here, and they, they they whisked me out to lunch one day and said, um, "Would you like to come and work for us?" I, I said, "I don't know. I don't know. Do I?" And um, 
they said, well, I'll be interested in maybe offering you... And I couldn't believe it. I was quite stunned. I thought, well, I thought I must have made a mistake. They've probably got the wrong man here. <laughs> but um, so I thought I'd better agree the deal before they change their mind. And um, it's been a very good time for me, I have to tell you. It's, uh, it's opened up bits of my brain that I didn't know existed, which is quite frightening, isn't it? Discover that you knew this and knew that. It's all this information, all this stuff which...